we are back on the boat here. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Yeah, we've been away from the boat for three weeks and it feels like a year. It seems like such a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but as we just arrived and we need to work a little bit before we can have some videos for you guys, we decided that today we are gonna show you one more thing from the trip that we didn't show you yet. We did a presentation at UK Sales. Duca did a presentation. Yeah. UK Sales Makers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was really sick, so don't get mad at me saying that I didn't let her talk. It's because actually she asked me before the presentation, yeah. take over for me, I cannot talk today. So I did a long, this is gonna be a really, really long episode, but if you're patient enough to go all the way to the end, I think it's a really cool episode because we talk about things that we never talk on the channel and I, it's a really special, it was really really cool. That was our first ever presentation about our project. So we were learning and it's tough to put everything in a short video. It's gonna be like probably like over an hour. But if you're patient enough, let us know what you think, if you like it or not. If you didn't like it, let us know also. But it's a way uh, he talked the history behind our channel. So it's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, basically we, I tried to tell you how we got to where we are right now how did we plan all this project and how we ended up being able to follow our dreams basically it's all about dreams yeah. but bef less talking because we're gonna already have a lot of talking <laughs> so let's get started enjoy i'm roberta and i'm duca and for the past year we have been building our own time shipping container house so we can travel around knowing that we will always have this little place that we can call home but guess what? We just found our dream project before we expected. This abandoned sailboat. So we are gonna stop building the house for a couple months to bring our boat back to life. And then we're gonna go back and finish the house. Glad to have you all, and I'll let Roberta and Duca take it over. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, most everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Duca. I'm Roberta. And we have been refitting a sailboat for over eight months, full time now. It was abandoned for almost 23 years now. Neglected, yeah, people say it's neglected. <laughs> I, for me it's abandoned, but yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we want to talk a little bit more than what you guys watch on the videos. So we want to start from where did the dream start, actually? How, how did we get to say it? So... <coughs> So basically, my family was always into sailing. We live in an island on the south of Brazil. So my summer house, when I was a kid, was a sailboat. Not that big, it was a 35-foot sailboat. But you know how teenagers are. Once you get to 15, you stop hanging out with your family. So when I was 15, I stopped sailing with my dad and I went to do something else. And my dad sold the boat because no one wants to sail anymore. And years later, Somehow I decided to go to university again. And when I was 27, don't ask me why, I might know, might not, I went back to university to become an engineer. And when I started the university, I was in one campus, and then the second semester changed the campus to a really far away campus. That means in order to don't get the trap jam six o'clock in the afternoon, I would go two hours earlier to university and wait there because it was more comfortable to wait there. And during one year, that's just a few of them. I read maybe 15 to 20 books of circumnavigation. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Every book I would read, I would just make her read. <laughs> so I started reading way too many books. And at that point, I was on second semester out of five years course. And I was like, I don't want to do engineering anymore. I just want to keep quit again. But I'm like, I cannot go back to university when I'm 27 and quit on the second semester. Now that I started, I'll go to the end. But at least I'm starting a profession that I can actually make money out of it. So I'm gonna, I created a plan 
and start trying to convince her of my plan. <laughs> she didn't really believe back then, but I, I worked really hard on trying to convince her that if I finish the degree, I work for five to ten years as an engineer, I could make money enough to quit, build a sailboat, and go sailing full time. So that was the plan, was what we need to do, right? And then I convinced her that in order to learn, so we can do that in the future, we should buy a smaller boat now. And then <coughs> we bought our first boat. Terrible boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 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 this boat was just wouldn't sail well at all. Terrible. But we to learn the hard way. Yeah, I mean like yeah. one, uh, my intention was to buy a hubcat. But she said, a hubcat I don't want because I would just get wet every time we go out. That's not a house. I want a small house. So that became our small house for the weekends. <coughs> not, not that long weekends because it was too small. And then we decided to buy a better boat. Yeah. And we bought... That, 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 boat, that was a boat. That was for real. So this boat, for the first six months we bought the boat, we spent every single weekend as a summer house. We would go as soon as we finished university until we need to go back to work on Monday every single weekend and that was our school that's where we actually started liking sailing more and more but when i got close to graduate from civil engineering degree i realized that i wasn't going to make money enough to buy the boat i dream of i was because i was not enjoying engineering but i was like let's try one more try i'm going to go to a master degree because if i go to a master degree i'll make more money because right now i don't have knowledge enough to make money i'll go to the master degree I'll have enough knowledge and I'll make more money, right? So then I apply for a few master degrees and we end up moving to Sydney, Australia. The plan was to stay at least two years in Sydney, if possible to stay longer just to get a citizenship and it's the exact place that for Brazilians to immigrate is easier than the US, so that's why we went there and not here. And we moved to Sydney. And there is one short video that we want to show you today. I don't know how many of those, or how many of you watched this one before. That's the first episode of our entire channel. That was the first video we ever made for the our YouTube channel. The audio is not the best. Yeah, we are, the audio is going to be. The audio is not the best. The quality of the voiceover is not the best. But I think the script, the story that tells, means a lot. This is a long, you don't need to watch this part. We needed to teach Brazilians how to turn on subtitles. So it took us, to do that, it took us one week of work, full time, seven days full time, just to shoot this. This all hands on. So it's like a full week of work. Sorry for the audio. We were learning how to shoot voiceover. And it's still, it's still hard for us. Yeah, that was inside of my dad's closet. <laughs> no transition point in life. We went to Australia with one dream. With one, we want to get a job as engineers, we want to make a living with that, so in the future we can find a boat and we can travel. That was, as you can tell, there's a lot of sailboats in that video already from, from then. <laughs> but I think more and more I started to realize that doing what I don't want, dreaming with what I want, wasn't working. Until we gave up. <laughs> yeah. One day, I was sitting in the park in Sydney with a friend from Turkey. I used to deliver food like, uh, you know, Uber Eats. In between all the deliver guys, I was the promise. And that's true, yeah. the engineer, he's a master degree engineer. So, and then one day, I, see, I was just me and a guy from Turkey, and I look at my cell phone, and I see a photo from Instagram from a friend in Brazil, showing getting in Bali to surf. Like, I'm here, working my ass off, and he's going to surf. He, he's been surfing for only a year. And then the next photo, he's like, I'm becoming the photographer from an expedition, sailboat expedition, from Bali all the way to Brazil for six months. He never sailboat before, he never thought about sailing, and the family he was on expedition with was the first book of those that I read. That's a family from Brazil that did a circumnavigation. They did now three already, but the first circumnavigation they left Brazil when I was born in 1984 and took them 10 years with three kids to come back and I watched them come back from my window. <laughs> I looked at my friend and I say, done. And he's like, no, you're not gonna quit. Just quit. 
and I call her and I say, moving to Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> that was the happiest day since, I don't know, he was like a child walking around and jumping, <laughs> so happy. <laughs> yeah, the guys from the delivery team didn't believe, but a month later we were in Indonesia and a lot of people in Brazil, our friends, would see pictures of us. We went to Indonesia, we went to Thailand, we went to New Zealand, and they think they're rich. They're just traveling around for four months while everyone works there for four months. But the truth is, we're not traveling. We had a mission that was, what are we gonna do from now on? We had savings, but every day of the, of the trip, the savings would go down, and we would not make any money. So instead of paying like, one day in a hotel, we would stay in a, the same hotel in Indonesia for almost two months because if you pay monthly, it's cheaper. We would only eat on the cheapest restaurants because we had a mission to find out what are we gonna do from now on. And we would do the same thing every day. I would wake up, I would go to surf, and then in the afternoon, we walk on the beach. As far as we could go until she made me come back because <laughs> she would never cross the rivers. And there is like some dirty <laughs> rivers, you know, like uh, waste rivers. And she's like, no, this one I won't cross. And then we come back. <laughs> Always the same. And then every day we talk about the same thing. What are we going to do? Some days was good. We come happy, with, excited with new plans. Some days she would come crying, saying she would go to her mom's house. I'm going to go back. No, that's it. And then at one point we were like, we need to decide. Time is flying. And at one point we need to decide. When I talk about talking about a future, I'm not, it sometimes seems like it's fake, right? Say that, oh, it was a sabbatical trip. We're just open to anything. We were. First time in life, no, pa no parents, no family, just us. If you ask us to go to Japan and you have a job in Japan, we might go to Japan. We were 100% open. And I'm serious. We just give them an opportunity, we go. Not, we had nothing to go back to Brazil to. We had no reason. And then we put in a piece of paper pros and cons of all the ideas, like four ideas. If we go back to Brazil, I can go back to work to my dad and that's good because I'll make money, and that's terrible because I'm gonna be stuck there. And that's good because this, but it's terrible, 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 terrible. And if we do this and that. One thing that's been always in between us, that's something that a lot of people don't know, is a camera. The day I met her, I already had a camera in my hands. Nowadays, YouTube is something that a lot of people are starting to do because they like something and they get the cell phone and shoot. My dream of doing documentaries comes before the dream of saving actually. 15 years ago I went to Morocco, to the Moroccan Film Festival and I came back to Brazil wanting to study cinema. Never happened, the family never agreed with. At one point I said, if I'm not going to study film, I'm going to do a documentary. That was 2006. So I quit university, my first degree, for one year to go and travel with a friend to shoot a documentary for one year. And that's when I met her. So when I met her, I was right on the way to take a year, a gap year, to shoot a documentary. And she spent with me and my friend six months. So that means shooting video and photo was always on in between us. And in Indonesia, we realized that one of the ways of us doing everything we like, not just one, because it's hard to choose. If you like too many things, it's hard to choose one thing. But if we choose documentary, we can do all we like, not one thing. So we try to put in a piece of paper, actually a Moleskine, a small book, the dream, pro the dream job. That would be to combine all our dreams and passions in one thing. And that one thing is of life. But how can we do that? I mean, like a lot of people keep asking, so do you have a job? Are you a millionaire or whatever, whatever, whatever? We know that YouTube became something that for who watches is just <coughs> someone uh, upload a video, but it's not true. The truth is most of the channels are companies, are people that actually make their livings out of working with video. And in order to make this to work, we needed to have a plan. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. I strongly believe that without a plan, we won't get anywhere. So we try to design a five years plan for the channel. What can we do? What do we like? How do you want to have a channel? What's the channel gonna look like? So basically, we discuss the end goal. Where do you want the channel to get? We wanna travel the world by sailboat. That's the final 
go off the channel. But we don't have money to do that. If we do that today, we just can't. We, we cannot afford to buy a boat, we cannot afford to fix a boat, and we can afford to start building a boat, but we don't have the money to finish the boat. If we start the boat and the channel doesn't go well, we need to sell the boat for cheap because it's just we cannot finish the boat. So let's create a few other seasons of videos that we can afford with the money we have. And with that, we grow the channel. And if that works, we might be able to build a boat with the money from the channel. I mean, our friends didn't believe, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's that? Oh, yeah. So then the plan. So the way we designed was we back then had exactly 25,000 US dollars. That was our savings. That's the money I saved to pay for the master degree. As I quit the master degree, I had $25,000. With that money, to start anything other than in our home country, we wouldn't last for six months. Because we didn't have time to work somewhere else. Everything we do, we just keep spending money. So we decided, let's go back to Brazil. We can, we can live at my mom's house. She lives by herself. She would love to have us at her house. We eat at our parents' house and the money is going to last for longer until we can figure out how to make this out. What's something that we like that could help in order to achieve a metal boat in the future? I always like metal boats. Don't ask me why, I just like metal boats. If we buy a shipping container, we can build a house for us to live while we build a boat and also learn the traits of building a boat. In a house, we have enough money to build the house. So it would be win-win. We build a house, we have no place to live, so we build a house for us to live. We learn with that, and then we go to a boat. If we don't get to grow the channel, if the channel doesn't go well in a year or two years, we just live in the house and we find a job. So that means if everything went wrong, we had a house and we look for a job. I mean, it's not the perfect plan, but I mean, it could work. <laughs> so we went back to Brazil and we bought that shipping container. Then it came this house. That's the first day of <laughs> work <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, you can tell, not ever, I mean, uh, after the food. Yeah. You can tell by the safety gears, right? Sandals and shorts and. <laughs> 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 the truth is, we, I had no idea what. We did like three times that. <laughs> like in a month. I, I had no idea what we were doing. We never touched any tools before. It's just like, it was tricky, but we were really excited about it. This is something that took my sleep for three months. We waited for the ship container to arrive for three months. <coughs> and I would not sleep because I was scared of how am I gonna cut the shipping container. I was scared to, and that's uh, the first cut I did on the shipping container. I was scared that if the disc breaks, I'm gonna get hurt or, and actually, I almost got hurt, yeah. I exploded a few discs, but I it was like a shot. <laughs> but, I mean, after a while, you get used to it and you learn. And that's how it was. That's the frames. That's her learning how to. Yeah, that's her birthday. Two years ago was to learn how to weld. That was a gift for her birthday. It was <coughs> welding classes. Yeah, so that room that was before became this, that became this, that became that. And that, that was the dream when you you know, just sketch on the computer yeah. and it becomes reality after. <coughs> yeah, so for many people, that's just a room, right? That's just a bedroom. I mean, like, kind of a bedroom, not finished yet. For us, it was actually the proof that we could do much more. Because if we could we do that? Baby steps. Don't think too far ahead. Do one thing, one step at a time. And if we could that, we could fix a boat. I mean, I, we just need money, but if we had the money for, back then we didn't have the money for, but I mean, like, if we had the money for, we could do it. That was, you know, like, it was like the, another turning point. Like, you know, the universe was one turning point, this was another turning point. And then, yeah. and then that happens. Yeah, that's not our boat, no, that's another <laughs> one. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this boat, but while I read books, so this was like seven years after, not, yeah, like close, like six years maybe after I started reading the books. And for all those years, I spent a lot of hours online looking for designs of boats to buy, or old boats to buy, or anything related to boats. And I came up with the perfect design that I wanted, that was called Polar, that's Polar, 
1943. That was designed by a Brazilian designer and there was just one made until today. This one, that's not finished, it's just the whole. And before we moved to Australia, I found my dream boat online to sell. This one, there was someone who started building and lost his company and had no money to finish. And then when I got back from Australia, we got back from Australia, it was still for sale when I said, we're gonna finish the house and we're gonna make money with that and we're gonna buy that boat that I've been looking for like two years already. And then someone bought the boat. And then I found out that the guy that bought the boat was a friend of a friend of ours. Because this boat was where we are refitting our boat right now, 700 kilometers north. And the guy that bought the boat is from our hometown. And when we moved to Australia, the way I paid for the master degree for the first semester, we sold half of that boat we had to a friend. So half of the boat paid for the first semester of the civil engineering degree. And then when I came back, we came back, we had a partner on the boat, and his friend bought our boat. And then I got so sad that I told all my friends that someone bought my boat. It's impossible, they bought our boat. You know? And then we need to go back to the house because, you know, like, it was hard. It, one thing that was hard during the period we built the house is that no one that watched our channel knew we were thinking about a boat. And we had double lives. So we work on the house, we love the house, don't take me wrong, we still love the house. It's still a dream of ours to have a tiny house so we can go back to something when we go to our hometown. But we always keep thinking and searching about boats. And then when we find a good boat, we like, things start getting slow on the house. And people, it's, I, I don't know how much they notice that. Sometimes you know, the building gets slow because half of the heart is somewhere else. And when we found that, that was a big problem. But then as he sold someone else, we went back to the house. That part of that boat. We, that's a huge, that's a, uh, <laughs> that's just a uh, bathtub, right? You can buy anywhere, just a bathtub. We had a lot of spare parts of plywood laying around and we're like, we're gonna build a bathtub. <coughs> That was a month of a lot of work. We got just a lot of the, I think the next picture shows better. Another one? Yeah. So that was a lot of just, <coughs> we had uh, storage uh, shelves. We took off the storage shelves and we built the bathtub with the storage shelves. It's because we were to put our hands out of the, out of the boat? Yeah, it was just like to put your mind just away, you just create a big project so you don't, you don't have time to think about the boat. And then we started building this bathtub, and that was a huge project. It took us two months, and then we found another boat. That's actually our boat. But to be honest, before when we found this boat, on the same day, around the same day, the, the other boat that the guy bought, I found online for sale again. <laughs> and I'm like, and I called my friend and said, I told you he was going to sell this boat. I was sure he was not going to finish the boat. And then I just keep looking the boat online and knowing that he's not going to sell. It's hard to sell a boat. That was like 70,000, 75,000 US dollars for a boat that's not even finished. No one's going to buy this boat. I'm, I guarantee no one is going to buy it. So I'm just going to keep looking every week to guarantee it's there. And I'm gonna, we're going to build the house. Once we finish the house, we're going to buy that boat. And suddenly one day the boat disappeared from the internet again. Another one month sad. <laughs> it's true, yeah. <laughs> and then I decided I need to call the guy. I need at least to know how much he sell, sold the boat for, how was the deal, and I called the guy. Hey Mauricio, this is Duca, I'm a friend of Andre. I heard you sold your boat. He's like, no. I was like, yeah, but the, the ad's not there anymore. No, it just expired. I didn't sell the boat. Like, <laughs> You know when, when there is a run, and in the beginning of the run, you need to cross a line right on the start. I just crossed the line before they start. Because it wasn't the right time to buy the boat, but I just told him I want to buy his boat. So what do I do now? Right on the same time that happened, we, someone showed up wanting to buy our own boat. The half of our own boat that we had. And also I was expecting to get m money from a last wheel of my dad's friend that died. So I, I got enough money to buy the boat, suddenly, out of, I was not expecting that, and in one week I sold the boat, I got some extra money, and the guy decided he wants to sell the boat, I mean, 
and we had a meeting, <laughs> business meeting, and I'm like, I think it's time to do it. Yeah, but we didn't finish the house. I'm like, we find a way. We can buy the boat, and then we finish after the house. We just buy now, leave the boat there, put in a piece of land, put a cover on it, and we finish the house, and then we finish the boat. <coughs> and then I talk to the guy, say, I want to go visit the boat, because I'm interested in buying a boat. I was like, okay. So we went there, and I fell even more in love with the boat. <laughs> and she's, she knew the boat was like the size we wanted. It was like a small house, but a big house at the same time. It was like a small house, a big boat. The boat's pretty big, it's 43, probably like 30,000 pounds. I, we, we talk in tons, but it's like maybe 12 tons, 13 tons. And we went to visit the boat, and I told the guy, I'm not joking. We really want to buy your boat, and that's why we're taking time to make an offer. Because I'm not joking; it's, it's not like uh, you know ex speculation. I'm not. It's, I'm. I'm not just curious. I really want to buy a boat. And I told him that tomorrow I'm gonna go to your house and I'm gonna say the price I wanna pay. Next day, in the afternoon, I was supposed to meet him, and in the morning he called us. Can I go to your shipping container house? You know, you have a meeting four o'clock in p.m and the guy calls you 10 a.m. Something went wrong. <laughs> but like, that doesn't sound right, but you can come. And then he show up and he say, I'm sorry, but I can't sell the boat. I went home yesterday and I told my wife and she said, we are not selling our dream. We have no money to finish, but we can. You're gonna be depressed. And then he's like, I had a daughter that just died three years ago when she was 15 and we found her diaries and she wanted to sell, sail the world with the family, we can't sell. Call all my friends again, I just lost the boat again. <laughs> and then I was so sad for like a month, and it's true. And we went out with, actually it's one of our patrons now, our good friend, and we went, me, her, him and his wife, and I was like, man, I lost my boat again and I don't have a boat, and she's like, He's like, do you remember the boat I showed you a month ago? <coughs> that this picture, because he tried to show me this picture before. And I said, I don't want to see it. I'm in love, I just, don't show me another one. I already have my love, that's not the one. And he's like, yeah, but I have that old boat that I show you. Well, can I see a picture? And then he comes up with this picture. And I'm like, hmm, it might be the one, you never know, but I'm like, yeah. Don't give me his phone number though. I'm gonna go to Sao Paulo because this is Sao Paulo. I'm gonna go to Sao Paulo in three months from now. If you give me his phone number, I'm gonna call you soon. I know myself. I'm, I'm gonna try to wait and I'm not gonna wait and suddenly I'm gonna call him out of nowhere. So before I go to Sao Paulo, I'll, you give me the number. And one day, three months later, and that's during these three months was when we built the bathtub and the whole thing because we need to put our mic somewhere else so we create a big project so we don't think about the boat too much and a day before we go to Sao Paulo I sent him a message on WhatsApp Hello Julio, I'm Duca uh, me and my wife have the project, we have a YouTube channel we are doing this, our plan is to do that we want to find a sailboat to do ourselves the fixing blah 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 all of that I use the knowledge that my friend gave me what I mean by that is that he tried to buy the boat before, but he is a doctor, he has no time. He asked the guy if he knew someone to fix the boat for him, and he's like, are you saying that you want to buy my boat, and you want to hire someone from a distance to fix the boat for you? No, nope, the boat's not for you. No, nope, I won't sell. So the guy didn't want to sell him because he didn't want to put his hand on the boat. So I used all the information against him, and I said everything he wanted to listen. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So then he's like, okay, we can talk. Come to Sao Paulo and we can talk. So we went to Sao Paulo. That was Mother's Day last year. We drove 10 hours. That was Sunday for Mother's Day lunch with her family that was there. Her, her sister was there in the same town as the boat. And we were late for lunch. That was 3.30 p.m. And I said, just tell her that we are still on the road. We are late because we're going to go home. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not going to go home without seeing at least the outside of the boat. Because all we have seen was this picture. In this picture, we didn't know then, but this was taken in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend said first, like, no, it's like seven years ago, and then became 10, and then became 15, and we, we had no idea. Yeah, the truth is, we didn't know how long it was really sitting there in the boat. 
and we fell in love because even though it looks terrible, it would touch the black parts. It's just dust. There was nothing <laughs> bad in me. And there, of course, if we found some rust later, but this day we didn't find one point of rust because it's just, it, was, it was just so good. I mean, that was after the first day. We didn't go inside the first day. We are not allowed to go inside because the security guard in the marina didn't even know we were supposed to go there. So I just stopped and like, I just want to take a look at that boat. Can I just go quick? I'll just go there, check, and I'll come back. He just said, I won't go inside. Because and he let us go. And this was actually yeah, the second day. We spent, just to try to make it short, I, you know I talk too much, she talked to me, I talk too much. <laughs> yeah, we spent in Sao Paulo to buy this boat one full week waiting to buy the boat. We received, on the past eight months, a lot of emails saying, how did you buy this boat? The guy didn't even let me inside of the boat. He never wanted to sell the boat. And the truth is, no one really tried to buy the boat. No one put the necessary work here. So we went to lunch with her family. Next Monday, we were supposed, to, next day we were supposed to see the boat with the guy. And I called him, so are you coming to show the boat? And he's like, yeah, I, I can't today, maybe tomorrow. One entire day sitting on the couch without internet, just like. <laughs> <laughs> and then he leaves four hours away. And then I called Tuesday, so are you coming today? He's like, yeah, actually the storm last night just dropped the mountain next to my house, just fall. And we cannot drive to the ferry because he lives in the island. Maybe tomorrow. So we wait another day. And it got to a point that he kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And during this time, I realized that one of my favorite books from back years ago was a book from another family that circumnavigated for five years in the end of the 80s. And I realized that the boat that they used was actually the same boat as this one, with two differences. It was a catch, two masts, and not lifting keel. But the design is 100% the same. So then I got the book back and started reading again the book. <coughs> and I opened the first page of the book and I actually gave to her that seven years ago, or maybe more, maybe eight years ago, as a gift when we did like eight years together, maybe seven years together. And on the cover said, one day we are going to travel the world with a boat called Odd. We didn't even know we were going to have a channel called Odd Life. I didn't remember we, I wrote that. And the boat's the same. I'm like, mm, this boat's meant to be. <laughs> and we were like, we are not leaving here before we see the boat. If it takes a month, we're going to sit a month here. We find videos, to, uh, we, uh, we have no idea. We are going to find a video to shoot or whatever. <laughs> In the middle of this, to find, because the channel, we take really serious. You guys know we never fail Monday. Monday is, Monday is important for us. Back then, no one knew about us looking for a boat. The audience had no, no idea. So we need to have a video about a tiny shipping container house. So we find another channel in Sao Paulo that also has a house. We go three hours away, shoot an interview with this guy so we could have content for the week. <laughs> and then we shoot a video about another guy that do woodworking to learn how to do drawings for the house. And then suddenly, sh I, I think it was you that had the idea of picking him up first. No. Was me? Yeah. yeah, because the problem is, he was stuck on his island. And I'm like, I have an idea to pick him up. I asked him if he had a friend with a boat to take him to the continent with his small boat. So he got a dinghy. His friend takes him to the beach on the continent. We drive three hours north, pick him up, drive three hours south with him. Spent three hours w looking the boat at night with him with flashlights from the cell phone. Three hours driving him back and three hours coming back. That means 15 hours to see the boat. And maybe that's why we bought the boat, because we had three hours on the car with this guy before we even saw the boat inside. And by the time we got to the boat yard, the boat was ours. It's just like a matter of saying yes. I mean, like, there was nothing more to say. In, oh, oh, oh and that's a legit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, during this week that we were just waiting and waiting and waiting, the guy, some people ask to talk more about this guy. This guy is a really special, it's a, he's a different guy, tough guy to talk to. He had accomplished a lot of things. He'd been to Antarctica with other boats 13 times. He attempted he attempt to walk from the coast of Antarctica to the center of Antarctica, that is 1,200 kilometers, three times by himself. So he's 
and guy that knows a lot of things and but I was like, I need to see the boat inside. Can you please at least send me a picture from the inside? And he sent me this picture. That was 22 years ago too. Mm -hmm. His wife on the boat that looks just like now. <laughs> and when I saw this picture, I'm like, the boat's nice inside because I had no idea how was the layout of the boat. But is that how it looks today? I, I have no idea because that's a long time ago. How do I know that it's still good? And then when we arrived at the boat, he was like really methodic. He's like, let's start from the stern all the way to the boat. So I show you everything, because he wanted to show every single detail. People think that he abandoned the boat and he didn't like the boat. It's the opposite. He loves the boat so much. So he went to the stern of the boat and he opened the bed and there is the steel wheel quadrant. And when he opens, this picture won't be, I mean like won't make, how do you call it in English? It's, won't make justice. Doesn't, it's just a picture. But when he opened the credit, I'm like, what? Did you install this yesterday? The stainless steel cable were just perfect. It was just like, seems like someone installed a week ago. And that minute, I was like, I just want to kick him out so we can get excited that we just bought a boat. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Like, if he didn't want to show us anything more about the boat, we would buy anyways. If he quit, it's like, no, I, I don't have time. I would buy without see anything inside. And from there, we moved to the saloon. And, and that's how the boat was, even though it was abandoned. The boat was actually much better than we imagined inside. Yeah, this is cool. One of our subscribers <laughs> from France last week did this 3D modeling of the boat. That's the sails are not correct. Yeah, he, he doesn't <laughs> sail. He sails just <laughs> flattened the wrong way around. But <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, yeah, so basically it's a French design, designed by Michel Joubert and Bernard Nivelle from Meta Boatyard in France. Was built in Brazil by a company called Dinieppe. I say a company, not a boatyard, because it was actually a company that made machines, not boats. And somehow, in the middle of the 80s, they decide to get their employees when they're not busy and they start building boats on their spare time. And that's, I think, why the reason why it's so well built is because they had so much good labor and the precision they had was really good. Uh, it's galvanized steel inside and outside, galvanized, 44 feet, 13 feet beam, 3.3 feet. It's a center board. Two, yeah, it's a center board, so it's really low draft. It's like 3.3 feet went up and 8.8 .8 went down, so it's like really long center board, really, really long. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the same guy did the, the drawings for us. And that's a little bit of the refit. <laughs> that's how it used to look like. That's how it looked a few months ago. Yeah, that's what we found. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the process is started by first cleaning the boat outside and then by discovering what we bought. Because actually we bought much more than we knew. <laughs> we, we found out what we bought after we bought it, right? Because we were so in love with the boat that we were like, no, just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we find out it's fine. Oh, I forgot what. Am I confusing you guys? <laughs> Is that too confusing? Because I go back and forth and just <laughs> stop this. You were the first test. We never did any presentation about the product ever before. Well, you're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically, before we bought the boat, there's, I forgot one story that's a funny one. Remember the old boat that the guy gave up on selling? During this week that we were in Sao Paulo waiting for the guy to show up, the other guy called me. Duca, we just had a meeting, me and my wife, and we are going to sell the boat. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but now we wait. I'm like, sorry, but now I'm in Sao Paulo. I told you I was going to Sao Paulo to see another boat, and I'm waiting tomorrow. I'm going to see the inside of the boat. So if you want to hold, you hold. But if you want to sell, just sell. But I'm going to give you an answer in a week. I cannot s do it now. And funny thing, the boat is still for sale. <laughs> no one bought yet. So then we started by washing the boat. <coughs> and this, even though it looks just washing a boat, <laughs> that's what made possible for us to be here. And that was what made possible for us to actually build the boat the way we want. That's when the channel grew. A lot of people ask, how can we afford to do what we're doing? People don't believe, but 100% of the refit is paid by videos, it's paid by patrons, it's paid by AdSense, it's paid by sponsors. And that's the reason why I believe the channel actually did the 
turn away was when we washed the boat because people were just curious to see what there was underneath that dirt. <laughs> Every time I see the dirty boat when it comes on. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, if you guys have any questions why I talk a lot and she don't talk nothing, you can ask me anytime. People think she doesn't work, she do the dirty dog job a lot actually. Yeah, this is the build for the chef, for the Asian chef. Yeah, so the, the first step after washing the boat, uh, I believe the boat is in a good condition this day after 22 years on the dry, on sun and rain, is because it was well built and because it was galvanized. So one thing we didn't want was to lose the galvanization because that's what we bought, we bought the galvanization. So in order to not lose the galvanization, we did a lot of there was a lot of hand sand involved. We could sand glass, but if we sand glass, we would lose the organization. Some companies said, no, I can sand glass, but I can control the machine, so you won't lose the organization. Uh, I, I won't trust. So that's what they took so long to paint, because it was like four months of work of painting, because we needed to find out what there was before the white. So there was a red paint, and then a green paint, and then a, just keep finding layers <laughs> until we got to... I'm sorry, I don't know what galvanization means. Galvanization, uh, they call also metallization, that is a bath, a hot bath of a different metal, mm -hmm. of zinc, zinc, so it won't rust. So basically it's like, uh, they call it sparkling galvanization, so it's like, a, let's put like a pressure washer, but with a liquid metal, really hot, and attacks and creates a layer of this other metal. So that means that even if you have a failing point, <coughs> and we had some failing points, yeah. and you have rust, it won't spread because the rust is protected. So it spreads really much more, much slower than if there, if there was a conversation. <coughs> there is a way to actually take that thing off and not damage it. It's a media bus, and you use plastic, you use them on Corvettes, yep. and we don't damage the gel coat. Yep. Yeah, but then comes the other problem. We live in Brazil. <laughs> sure. sorry, so I'm sorry to say bad things about my country, but like it's tough because a lot of ideas come from the outside. You should do this. We don't have to. We should. We should buy this. We cannot. It's tough to buy things from outside of the country. The, the government protects a lot. The local market is just so a lot of suggestions like we couldn't find. Now, is there any way you could like have like a third party get the product for you and then ship it to you? Uh, I will just skip the presentation one second. I will tell you one story. No, no, I'm going to tell you one story that explains the whole thing. Two weeks ago, someone from Seattle sent us a painting. Just a painting, no frame, just the paper. I asked him, please put the price on the tag low. Because he painted the, the, the painting. And he told the shipping company that it costs one dollar, right? They charged him to send there a hundred and ten dollars around the shipping cost. When arriving, they charged us $120 of taxes. And it cost, it was a piece of paper. So, if I cannot get a piece of paper, how can I get a machine or, it's just tough. Mm -hmm. We were lucky that the guy wanted us to have the painting, so he sent us through PayPal the money for the tax. And then, of course, we pay some of the tax also. But it's hard. So, during this period, uh, during the tiny house, we are, some people ask, so which project are you guys proud of most? The tiny house or the boat? The boat's a much bigger project, but the tiny house we did all ourselves. That was our school. That was our laboratory. Anything we wanted to try, we tried. We feel like doing fiberglass, we did fiberglass. We feel like working with wood or with metal was basically an excuse for us to try new things, and that was awesome. On the boat, on the other hand, of course we, are, we love what we're doing, but it's such a huge project that we need to hire some people, some help, professional help in between, because a house won't sink, a boat will sink. So it's more like a serious game. But at the same time, even though we have a welder working with us, it's an excuse for me to learn with him. So that's the first time I tried TIG welding with his machine, because he was working, and I'm like, I need to try some, and that was really cool. I got burned, actually, that day. I burned my arm with TIG welding for like a week. I was like, really burned. So that's the process. We took uh, all the paint that we could off. We left the paint that was already in good shape. 
primary board, some were welding on the deck, some were rust, primary. It went into the painting cap. That was the big moment, like the big transformation. We, we went to the painting cap, it looked like this, and it came out like this. Yeah, a lot of people ask why did we choose orange, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's two, two answers. One, if you are at an anchorage at night with 50 boats, you know exactly where it is. <laughs> the second one is that we want to travel and we want to meet you guys. And if we go, let's say, to his island, he might find out, find out that we've been there a month later and we didn't meet him because he didn't know we were there. If we arrive at his island with an orange boat, he's going to be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Why orange? Huh? Why orange? <laughs> oh, orange. Uh, we have, a, you know, pelican case? The equipment case, we have an orange pelican awesome. case, we really like the orange. <laughs> and the boat next to us in the marina had a really orange queue. We're going to steal that orange, so we copied his orange from the queue. Your first choice was red, but I didn't know. True, yeah. Yeah, it was red, but she did not allow me, so I went halfway. So if I cannot do red, we do orange. The orange and the copper bottom look good. Yeah, but it's not copper bottom. That's just a primer. Oh, that's just a primer. It's going to be gray, dark gray. It's a metal boat, so they, they say that's not good to have copper water. By the way, one explanation, she been sick for three days, so even though, of course, I always speak more than her, but today is even worse, because she's actually a little bit better, but yeah. yesterday she was really, really bad, so uh, we're trying to... That's not ski, a easy job, but at the same time a hard job, because even though it looks really easy to draw the squares, that took a long time to find the right drawing. Like, no, that's right. No, take off again, again, <laughs> again. again. <laughs> that was another big project. Hatches. Uh, a boat that leaks is not a good boat. You can say, oh well, but if it's always wet inside, it doesn't work. We decided to do the long way. You guys may watch the videos, but <laughs> that was like maybe the trickiest job so far. I think the hatches took a long time to do it. But <laughs> That was a tough one. That was the rudder post, uh, the rudder shaft. The former owner said, don't touch the rudder, it's fine, you can use it. I'm like, I'm not going to trust that. <laughs> he didn't want us to touch, but I was like, uh, let's do it. So we redone, that's the new shaft. That's a project that we didn't finish yet. I mean, we kind of did, we painted. That's the diesel tank, by the way, if you don't know. The entire boat, the way this boat was built, the structure part of the boat is the diesel tank and the water tank. And from there, you have the bulkheads and the plates, those triggers. So that means that the tanks are part of the structure of the boat. And they are huge to treat. Even though it's good to have a lot of diesel, it's bad to fix a lot of diesel tank. So now it's all, I think, yeah, that was the problem. We had no idea why it was like that because it was full of diesel, it was not supposed to be rusted. And it was the entire tank like that, and we transformed it into that. That's much better. But we still didn't finish, we needed to, it's there, sitting there. We wanted to leave at least two weeks before closing to see if any rust come back so we can treat. And we, as we decide to come here, we're like, no, just leave as it is. And also because the gasket in Brazil, we ordered a month ago and didn't arrive. Yeah, we ordered one month ago and we didn't get gasket yet. So we did the guesses. <coughs> That's the employee wash the best to sell. <laughs> it's funny, the marina, the marina, no one believed that we could ever sell a mess. When we said, we're gonna sell the mess and buy a new one, they'd be like, no one sells old yeah. mess. <laughs> I mean, mess is something that you build for a boat. It's not something that you go to the store and say, like, give me a mess, I use a mess. And they said, ah, oh, I think we can do it, we can sell the mess. And we put in a video and we sold it three days. <laughs> that was a great job. And we sold for one third of the price of the new mess. Oh, What's nice. a really good thing? The, one, the new one has a The new one? Oh. It's, the problem is that when you edit a video, you think everyone watched already. <laughs> Tomorrow, tomorrow's video is about the mess. <laughs> so I'm talking thinking that you already know that the mess is there. But I think we can show that. Uh, Basically, What's next is that we are really excited to go back to the boatyard <laughs> to put the mess up. Oh, that's going to be in three days? Not necessarily. We're going to be in Brazil in three days, but it takes a while to put the mess together. And one of the reasons why we are here is because we had some stuff for the mess that we wanted to buy. 
and that's the reason why we came to the States and also to come to UK sales because we are designing our new sales because new mass, new region deserves new sales, right? <laughs> so we are starting to talk about the new sale plan and it's going to change a little bit compared to the old one and that's what we're excited about the future. Yeah. I had a question about your uh, final thing. Yep. Did you use any final? Not yet, we will. No, but you're going to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's just on the primer because we need to paint right before going to the water. Right, right. So it's not the right time right. to do it. So we are waiting to get closer to the water. So this is just eyes. Least, because people <laughs> see the boat painted and see that the mess arrived and be like, oh, so you're going to the water. It's not necessarily like that. We still have uh, diesel tanks and water tanks to close and to fill. We are going to exchange all the holes for the water and diesel systems, all the valves of the boat. We need to store batteries, charger, inverter, um, electronics, maintenance to the boiler, hardware on the deck. We have a lot of things to do. What kind of batteries are going to use? What kind of batteries? I'm glad you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> because we actually install regular batteries, how so called lead, uh, lead acid. Because in Brazil we won't find uh, lithium. It's just, if you find, it would cost half of the price of the boat. And I'm serious. We pay 210,000 of our money, would cost close to 100,000 just the batteries. And people keep complaining that you're wrong, you should put lithium. Right? Sorry, we can't, we don't have the money for it. But last week on Miami Boat Show, we just got sponsored by Battleborn. So they say they're going to ship batteries for us in Brazil, so we're going to go lithium. We hope they can. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I still don't believe, I only believe when it arrives there, they say they can, they have their way of putting the berries in Brazil. <laughs> so for now, we're going to have little berries. That's, and sorry for talking too much, but you guys can ask anything you guys. I know. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, for, we're going to answer a few questions that everyone asks. Because you're going to ask anyways, and then you can ask whatever you want to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, first question that everyone asks, how much did it cost? That's like, we get emails every week. So, how much did it cost? The reason why we didn't tell how much it cost until now is because we want to finish before we give the numbers. We want to give the full detail of how much we spent. Just a random number, so far we spent 50,000 US dollars on the purchase of the boat, and we spent another 50,000 US dollars on the refit. Before you think that's too expensive, the reason why it's expensive is because in Brazilian law, we are not allowed to buy used boats outside of the country. That means the market is so small that the availability of boats are expensive. For example, what's today? Yesterday, I think, I went online to search for metal boats in Brazil right now. There are three available. So that means Two, two are the same as ours. Yeah, two, there are three available, two are the same as ours boat, the same design. So basically, there is no choice. You either buy a boat outside and you never can bring your boat home, or you pay the price. So our boat, if it was here, might be half the price. But as we are in Brazil, that's, there is nothing we can do. On the other hand, the refit costs much less. For example, people complain, so you pay for a guy to help you with the diesel tank for a month. How much would it cost for someone to take rust off a diesel tank here for an hour, how much? Like $20 an hour? Uh, I'd be more than that. More, $50, $50 an hour. Yeah. The guy that helped us to clean the diesel tank charged $25 a day. Wow. So that means, but in one hand, it's ex more expensive to be there, but it's cheaper to be but there. But our money is worth Yeah, but uh, yeah, our money right now is just. <laughs> yeah, dollar is 4.5 by 1 right now. So, your boat is 46 feet long? 44. 44. Yeah. And you've spent total so far of about 100 grand. Yeah, 100. Yeah. Th yeah. Let me tell you, my friend, you got a bargain. Yeah. A yeah, tremendous yeah. bargain. You've got one of the finest sailboats on the world. Yeah, but will be on the And I mean, <laughs> with that, I include the price of buying a brand new mess, rig, dinghy, yeah. brand new dinghy, yeah. brand new jig engine that we bought already, 100% of the electronics, 12. Plus, plus, 12, uh, each is sharp butter. Plus, what you told me about the, uh, uh, the wind vane. Yeah, and we have a wind vane that yep. came with the boat. Yeah, so you've got a boat that will take you anywhere you want to go in the world. Yeah, we believe. 
kudos to you guys because you worked your butts off it's and we watched it happen and I'm proud of you. Oh, that's another question. Yeah, people keep it asking, so how can you afford? Do you have a job? That's a full-time job. I mean, like, that's two full-time jobs. In the boat yard, we work as hard as anyone else, but they go home and they rest. We go home and we add videos. Or answer messages. Yeah, or answer, yeah. For example, we post video 10 o'clock in the morning, Monday. So that means Monday morning is hard to work on the boat because we need to get ready to post the video at 10. Once we post the video, she answer messages for one full day. When, and when I mean full day, it's like all day long, like 500 to 1,000 messages run it. Right, you got 24 time zones, so. Yeah. So that means, yeah, we don't have a job. That's our job, basically. We open up a company. Yeah, we actually have a company. Odd Life Craft is a company, you know. Last Since week. last week. Since last week. <laughs> yeah. And how can we afford? That's how can we afford. But people say, so it's easy to say, oh, you pay with videos, but how? Because some people are just curious. How do you make money with videos? Anytime you watch a video on YouTube and there is an ad, this ad is placed by YouTube, by Google, but it shares having revenues from the ad with you. That means we are a channel partner of YouTube and 55% of all the revenue from the ad comes to us. So if you watch a video and there is an ad, you are giving money to the person that actually created the video. And that's like 50% of what we make. <laughs> of course, he talked too much and we ran out of battery. <laughs> yeah, it happens. I mean, like that was a long one hour talk, but it was really fun. And by the time we realized we didn't record the last questions, but just so we can conclude, so we can finish, we at least want to finish this question that's how we afford to do what we are doing so half of the money comes from adsense yeah how about the rest the rest comes from merchandising we we have an online store so you can buy shirts mugs bags yeah. phone case really nice gifts i, I like it yeah. <laughs> I, I like the mug the mug is pretty cool <laughs> yeah there's the link on the description below for the store and also we have some sometimes we make some sponsored videos only if we like the companies yeah. If we have done a sponsor video, we like what the company does, we like what the company sells. Otherwise, we don't yeah. do it. Like, we have many times companies uh, how call, contacting us to do sponsor videos, for example, for games, games like uh, cell phone games. We don't play games, so we don't do cell phone games. I mean, like, if they pay like $20,000, <laughs> maybe we would help the boat, we would do one. But <laughs> no, we, yeah. we, do, we don't want to do, do sponsor videos that we don't really use their service or their product, so that's why we don't do that often. Another way to afford vi our way of Vi really? Yeah, video production. <laughs> video production is donations through PayPal. Yeah, that so helps a lot. You guys that donate through PayPal, yeah. that, that's a really huge support. That's pretty cool. And half of the, the money that we have comes from patrons. Yeah, patrons are just amazing. Yeah, patrons, I don't know if you know what's that, but patrons are people that really like what they are watching and they know that in order to keep doing that, we have costs. So they just want to support us to keep doing what we love. And in exchange, we give some small perks, like they watch the video a few days before, or sometimes we have some extra video for- We are gonna start making some, uh, some like, a, how can I say, sorte? Yeah, uh, draw names. Yeah, we, we plan to draw names from our patrons in the future to come to the boat to spend a few days with us. But that's just in the and future. We didn't we finish the boat yet. And we have some things to, to give to them as oh, well. Yeah, we will do some giveaways on the next yeah. month also yeah. for patrons. But that's not the point. The point is like, I think people that are patrons, they are more because they want to support us than because they want to get extra things. I mean, like extra things is just a way of showing them how much we appreciate but i don't believe that's the main purpose of anyone that donates to the project i think who donates is because they do believe on what we do and that's why we always end the video thanking our new patrons because they're just awesome like now yeah like now <laughs> of course but no. before we do that we have someone else that we need to thank yeah we want to thank everyone uh, from uk sale makers they we had awesome. an amazing time there thanks a lot for um just for make it possible for us to use the space and to invite everyone that wanted to show up to talk to us and to hang out with us it was amazing we had an amazing time for like five days 
was was really good experience. We saw them making sales. We got to try their their so sewing much. machine. That's a huge one, by the way. <laughs> that was really cool. We really appreciate it and we're really thankful for that. Emma, thanks for sending me an email four months ago. <laughs> that was really good. And now, yeah, I think we need to welcome more our new patrons yeah, because this, this video is, is over an hour yeah. already. <laughs> yes, we're getting longer and longer. So welcome on board. Jeff. Rick, Robert, Bart, Henry, Anthony, Brian, Bem-vindo também Marcelo, brasileiro. Bem-vindo a bordo. <laughs> And we also want to thank the donation to our PayPal. Thanks a lot, Alan. <laughs> guys, thanks so much. We really appreciate your support. And of course, we see you guys next, next Monday. <laughs> see you guys next Monday. <laughs>